Good morning. This is David Schaefer with Feather and Equipment. It's a beautiful last day of summer morning here in Jamesport, Missouri. And this morning we're going to harvest some broilers. And we're going to take you through a step-by-step -step look at how we do it with our equipment. Let's see how our stalled water is doing. Handy little kitchen thermometer. I put in tap water at about 100 degrees. And it looks like it's up around 130 now. So that heats pretty fast, under an hour. If you put in cold water, 55 degrees or so, better allow a couple hours to be safe. While that's heating up, let's review the operation setup of the stalder, because this is the most important piece of equipment in your processing. If your stalled is on the money, your feathers are going to come off easily. If your stalled is too short or too cold, feathers are going to stay on and people on the getting table are going to be unhappy. If your stall is too hot or too long, the skin's going to tear. And so uh, to have the perfect bird, we have your thermostat set at 145 degrees. And you're going to be right on the money with this machine. It'll take all the, all the heartache out of the process and give you a nice clean bird. So to set up, first you put your valve on. Make sure it's closed. Hook up your gas line to a propane bottle. Open the valve. And this is your gas valve here. And this button, you push in so that the pilot notch is lined up with the red button. And hold it in for a count of at least 60 while you're clearing the air out of all this line and all of this, this line down to your pilot valve. After about 60, you can start pressing your igniter button to, to get a spark and start up uh, your pilot light. It may take 90 seconds, may take two minutes. Um, you can reach down here with a match if you want to. We've included this handy little piezo igniter to make that easy for you. Your pilot light is right under the, the water valve about four or five inches in. When that's lit, that sends a signal back to the gas valve. It'll stay open by itself. You'll have, have uh, gas going to your pilot light. Then you turn this button over so that the on is right next to the red, and you'll hear your flame kick in below. All right, let's set up the dunking mechanism. The tripod fits on the corner near the operator. I'm going to run a hose through one of the angles at the base so that I can thread a float valve on. Uh, I found when I used this equipment that I kept forgetting to add water, and pretty soon the water level would be so low that I wasn't getting the, the legs fully scalded and so then I'd have to stop and add water and I usually have to add cold, cold water so it would slow the whole operation down. We've just included a, an inexpensive float valve in your kit so you won't have this problem. So the float valve is around the side, I've put the tripod on, the lever goes on top of the tripod, shackles go at the end of the lever and then I'll test it out and I notice that I don't have the tripod locked in. A simple little flip lever locks that in. I give it a test. Both the springs are attached. You can adjust the springs depending on the load of, of uh, poultry. And I notice that I got the shackles on backwards. You want the looped ends away from you so that you can easily load them. Everything's looking good right here. Okay, now we're going to prepare the kill cone stand, and the first thing I'm doing is spraying a vegetable oil spray uh, into the cones and on the kill cone stand and on the co blood collection tub so that cleanup will be very simple. The chickens have been off feed overnight, and they have been um, well, well cared for, not stirred up. I'm going to be very gentle. I'm going to grab them around, gently around the body. Uh, not holding them too tight. The feet are up and I'm going to put them feet in my right hand and reach through the bottom of the cone with my left to gently pull the head out. The knife is on top of the stand. I'll brush back some feathers and then gently slid across the side of the neck to catch the carotid artery. I don't want to hit the windpipe. I don't want to sever the head to throw the chicken's uh, nervous system into shock. I want them to feel nothing and just get lightheaded. And uh, this is as humane a killing process as there is. Here you'll see it again. A few sweeps with the knife to get the feathers out of the way. A very gentle cut. You do not see these chickens thrashing or uh, they're not squawking. Um, 
done properly. It's a very painless, humane way to just uh, lose consciousness for the for the birds. All right, we're going to get a little bit more of a close up here uh, to see this technique, and it just takes practice to catch the carotid artery. Chickens are not thrashing. One more view. Now we're going to take a look at the stick method. It has the advantage of catching both carotid arteries and therefore bleeding out a little bit faster, but it requires a pointed knife and a little bit different technique. Here I'm going to try to show where to insert the knife, and it just takes practice so that you get only the carotid artery, again, not the windpipe, not the nerve column. Once the chickens have bled out, which takes a minute to two minutes, we load them onto the shackles, and you'll see the shackles start to balance with three chickens. We send your shackles out with a spring tension for about 30 pounds, which is roughly four average chickens, so that it will be neutrally balanced and be minimal effort required to push the lever down. A child could do it. So here we go. There's one dunk. I leave them in and swish it around a little bit to get good water penetration around the, around the feathers. What we want to do is we want to break down the proteins in the skin that are holding the feathers, but we want to not overcook the skin so that we um, tear it or actually cook some of the meat under the skin. So it's a, it's a balance, and that's why we're going up and down, not just leaving them in the water. So if you're counting dunks, you might see how long this is the first batch, and so my water is probably closer to 150 degrees than 145. It's the hot end of the cycle for the first batch. So that's why I always pull feathers. You don't know if it's going to be uh, a few more dunks or a few less dunks, but I pull a wing feather after the third or fourth one. We're getting close here. I think they're probably ready, but for safe measures, I'm going to give them one more dunk and then pull a feather. You see how easily that releases from the wing. Hardly any resistance at all. Okay, so I'm going to swing the birds over, kick the, or get the start switch on with my foot, and easily drop the chickens right in. The featherman's turned on with a foot switch. The chickens will easily sweep in again, turn on the water valve for some spray. The feathers are going to the outside, getting washed down. You can't see it, but they're all coming out of chute at the bottom. They're swept out by some upside down fingers on the plate. And the, the work area is very tidy because of this. Chickens are completely clean in less than 20 seconds.